Welcome back, small group leaders. This is session three, lesson three, the structure of small groups. So again, uh, download that PDF if you haven't already. Find, uh, find lesson three, the structure of small groups. Today we want to talk about, in this video, we want to talk about um, primarily what does, what is your role as the shepherd of the small group? You'll notice right here in our, in our introduction, it says a healthy church is defined primarily, let me, let me highlight it here, a healthy church is defined primarily by its relationships. And, and we could say the same thing, we could say it this way, a healthy Christian is marked by healthy relationships. You can't say, your group can't say, as a leader, you can't say, no Christian can say, I am growing in Christ, and yet all their relationships are a train wreck. That, that just doesn't work. To grow in Christ is to grow in love, and to grow in, in love is to be able to relate to others and care for others and serve others and be kind to others and all of those beautiful things that Christ pours into our lives. And so our relationships within a church reveal how we're doing as a church. In a small church, it might be easier for everybody to just kind of know each other and be connecting and, and growing together. But as a church grows bigger, for the sake of impact, the church also needs to grow smaller for the sake of intimacy, for the, for the sake of relational growth and relational healing. And so that's what our small groups do for us. Our small groups serve as the structure to ensure that people are cared for, that they are growing in their relationship with Christ. Small groups are the trellis, if you will, for the growing of the vine of our relationship with Christ. So, so the vine is growing, it's just going to kind of go all over the place unless we give it a little trellis, we give it something to grow along. And that's, that's how we see small groups, as that place where people can learn how to love and care and confess even, ah, and they can, they can come together and grow in holiness. Okay, so what is your role in all of that as the leader? You are the shepherd of the small group. You say, what? I didn't know I was signing up to be a shepherd. That kind of sounds like being a pastor. And you're right. Small groups should be the front line of pastoral care, shepherding care. You're, you are going to know things going on in the lives of the people in your group probably long before I do as the pastor of the church or, or any of the pastors do. You, you're going to know what's going on. You're going to have more intimate details from people's lives that in a church of hundreds of people, the pastors, the paid pastors, and even the elders of the church, they're just simply not going to always have. And so you're on the front lines. You are the relational shepherd of your group. Okay, so what does that mean? The number one thing it means, it, at, now that I've scared you and, and kind of set you up on a pedestal, the number one thing that means is that you are sending people to God, sending people to God, sending people to Christ. They're going to come to you, send them to God. They're going to want you to solve the problem. They're going to want, they're going to look for answers from, from you. You don't have to have all the answers. That's, that's what this is all about. We are the shepherds of the great shepherd, Jesus. We are the under shepherds. And so what does that mean? We're constantly pointing to him. We are getting our group members to relate to God. That is our goal. That's your takeaway from this lesson, from this video. If you don't hear anything else, hear this. Your job as a small group leader is to get people to relate to God, to go to God. Say, for example, people come into your group and all they do is complain and vent, 
my wife, this and that, my husband, do, 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 my boss, my mom and dad. And, and that's week after week after week. It's not, it's not like once in a while. Everybody kind of needs that once in a while, but week after week after week. What is our strategy as a leader? Our strategy is to show that person that they need to take all of that complaining, all of that anxiety, all, all of those fears, all of that to God. Take it to Christ so that when they start coming to group, they've already taken a deep breath. They've already vented with Jesus. So now when they come to group, they don't come needy, 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 needy. They come ready to give, ready to pour out. This is our job as the leader is to get people to relate to God. It can sound cliche, but sometimes you have to look at the people in your group and you have to say, have you prayed about it? Have you talked to God about it? Have you, have you taken it to God? And so again, maybe, maybe that's not the very first time they come in, they've had a bad day and that happens, or there's been a tragedy in their life. Oh no. And obviously when they come to group, there's probably going to be some venting. There's going to be some crying. There's going to maybe be some anger. But for that happening over and over and over again, we want to teach people. You go to God. We take it to God. We want to get, so letter A, we want to get people to deal with God. That is the, the, the challenge of our group, the challenge of our leadership, that we want to show people that they can take their life in front of the throne of God. Because why? Because that's where real change happens. That's how people actually change. Small group is not going to change people's lives. God is. Small group, you, small group leader, you are not going to change anybody's life. Jesus will. And so how? how? Only if you are constantly pointing people to Jesus, pointing them back to the gospel, pointing them back to, to Christ. And so that's the purpose of our groups. That's your purpose as a shepherd, as a leader, is to get, you, get those sheep to line up behind the good shepherd and to follow him and to look to him and to, to let his grace sustain them. We want to teach people to, that um, they can take anything to God, the joys and the sorrows and, and even the sins and the sufferings of their lives, that they can bring all of that to Jesus. Let's look at the next page. As the, as the leader of my group, letter B, I want to, I'm a facilitator, so I'm not there to teach a lesson. In fact, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes as a small group leader, I purposefully, I, I try not to over-prepare for my small group. I'll make sure I've read the passage or I'll, I'll look at the questions ahead of time, but I'm not spending hours and hours prepping some big Bible study for my group. I'm not doing that because I'm a facilitator. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my own personal life to God and, and draw from the text. I try to answer the questions myself personally. Not try to, I'm not trying to anticipate everything that everybody's going to say in the group. I'm, I want to be able to go into the group and say, okay, here's how I have taken my life to God, my sins to God, my struggles to God, my successes to Him, so that when we come together, I can share that with my group and, and I'm not coming looking to vent or complain or, or um, just be that consumer that we've been talking about so much. So I'm a facilitator. I want the scripture to speak for itself. I want you to discover the truths of scripture yourself. I'm not spoon feeding in the group. I'm not uh, listen, sometimes in group, this is the worst thing about a group. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to ask a question. You're going to read the question. Silence. Crickets. See how terrible that is? You wanted to fast forward me, didn't you? To get past that silence. And it was like three seconds. In your group, that's going to happen. You're going to ask that question. Nobody's going to have an answer. That's okay. Let the silence play out. Let the people look, encourage them. Keep, look, look at it again. Read it again. Let's all read it again. 
until we draw out the answer from the verse. A million times we've read a scripture in my groups. We've read a scripture and we've looked at the question and people jump in with these quick answers, don't they? They got answers, but they're not, they're not answers from the verse. They're not answers from the actual scripture that we're looking at. I could just receive those answers and say, okay, they talked and move on. Or I can say, no, that didn't come from the verse. Look at the verse. Don't just tell me what your head thinks. Don't just tell me that what's on the top of your head. Look at the scripture. Let's look at the scripture together and dig it out. And so we're letting them explore the scripture for themselves. Don't get bogged down, though. This is the flip side. Don't get bogged down in the passage. This is the, this is the other very common thing that's going to happen in your group. You're going to read a scripture and you're going to have a question. And, that, and, that's a, and it's going to be a good, solid, like, what's the gospel? What's grace? Question. And people in your group are going to start asking questions and they're going to start going off into the weeds. And they're going to say, well, why, why did it, why did it, rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Why not 39 days or 41 days in Noah's Ark story? What, why, why not that? How tall do you think Goliath really was? I mean, what's that about? And they're going to start asking questions and we're going to get off into the weeds of things that don't really have anything to do with what Jesus is trying to do, what he's trying to teach us. We want to stick to the big ideas. Who is God? We'll talk about this in a future lesson, but who is God? Who am I? What is grace? We're kind of sticking to those main things. As, a, as the shepherd of your group, let her see. This is an important concept. We are balancing the individual with the group. We're not letting any one individual in our group dominate. Again, yes, there's going to be times that that person in your group, they need all the attention that night. And that's okay. And that can happen. And it's going to happen. Maybe their spouse died, or maybe they lost their job, or, or maybe they just got a, a bad diagnosis, or maybe something great has happened. They just had a baby, or, or, or um, they got a, a, new, a new job or a new situation. And you can spend a lot of time on those things and celebrate and cry with that person. But in general, no one person should take control of the group and dominate the group where every week after week after week, we're only talking about that person, only talking about that person's problems. And so as the group, you've got to balance, the, as the leader, you have to balance the group with the individual. The, the, the health of the group has to be an important priority. The group as a whole is going to grow, and it's going to change, and it's going to transform. And so you have to keep that in mind. And that's a good thing. And it needs to happen. And so sometimes you might have to have that conversation off to the side with the individual. At the same time, though, you need to make sure that you are growing in love for everybody in your group, that you are reaching out to each of them individually, that you're caring for them. You're not playing favorites, so to speak. Uh, and that can be hard. That can be tricky. A lot of times groups are formed around two or three close friends and then other people come in and this can, these original three can feel cliquish. You need to be making sure that you're reaching out to everybody in the group and showing attention and showing love, growing in love for each of those people. And so then in the group, just in conclusion, some, this last paragraph gives us some specific things that we can do in our groups as we shepherd people, ask specific, penetrating, personal questions. If the questions you're handed by the pastors or by the Bible study material isn't doing that, and a lot of it doesn't, then make up a question. Ask a question. Make it drill in a little bit deeper. Ask someone to apply it to their specific situation. Uh, answer questions with compassion, patience, and encouragement. Never, ever, ever act like you're shocked by what somebody says in your group. <gasps> you did what? No, no, avoid that. 
You want people to see when they say something, they might, they might be saying something in this group now. It's been two years and finally they're saying something that they've never said to anybody in their life. They are confessing something or they're telling a, a, a tale from their past of trauma. And your job is to remain calm and to listen and then be compassionate and enter in to that with them without judging them, without being shocked by what they say. Everybody's got struggles, everybody's got sin struggles, and it's going to take everybody time to expose those things and reveal those things, if, the, if they ever do. And when that day comes, make sure that you're there to, to greet them with open arms and the arms of Jesus' grace. And then lastly, finally, number big, huge rule, biggest rule, never, ever, ever gossip about your group. Never talk about what happens in your group. Never share personal things outside of your group, even if you feel like you need to bring it to the pastor. Maybe it's that serious. And you say, I got to take this to the pastor. Make sure that you tell that person that you're going to do that. Talk to them first and say, hey, what you said is pretty serious. I think that we should go to the pastor together and make sure that you get their permission before you do that. And the one exception to that rule is going to be if they're talking about harming themselves or harming somebody else. If you think there is really a threat of personal harm or, you know, like I'm going to, I'm going to hurt myself, commit suicide, or I'm going to go out and, I'm, and you really believe that somebody might go out and hurt somebody else, then that is the one time that you are allowed to... Um, tell an authority, tell a pastor, or even call the police if you need to, uh, to prevent that from happening. But those are rare. That, that, that should be very, very rare. Very, those, that's an extreme thing. In general, what, what is said in small group stays in small group. And I know that you will be there for them, uh, just like Jesus is there for you. I know that you'll be there for your, the folks in your group to, to hear what they say, to listen compassionately and gently and offer grace in time of need. All right, go ahead and take the little quiz that goes along with lesson three, and we'll see you in our next video in lesson four.